Over recent years, we've chosen the lookouts on Sydney Harbour as the backdrop for Bow Caddy Media's lead-up coverage to the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. But this time, we're talking about another race, soon to start on the other side of the world, the equally renowned Rolex Fastnet Race. And why are we here, talking about this race? Well, as there are five Australian boats in this 50th edition, we've taken the opportunity of being in Europe to catch up with the Aussie contingent and to cover the race start. Held every second year, this 695 nautical mile classic starts in Cowes, makes its way down the Solent, sails its way down the English coast, past Land's End, across the Celtic Sea and rounds the famous Fastnet Rock Lighthouse on Ireland's southwest tip. And from there it returns, rounds the Scilly Isles, up the English Channel to the Finnish port of Cherbourg and France's Normandy coast. Some 494 boats are entered for this race, making it the world's largest ocean classic. The five Australian boats in the race comprise Paddy Broughton's Keeloa 2, which has made her way to England under her own keel, Steve Capel's Swan 65 Eve, which is taking part in the race as part of a round-the-world cruise, Sean Langman's Maluka has been shipped to England, and will be racing as the smallest boat in the fleet. For Jules Hall and Jan Scholten, They've chartered a British J99, very similar to their own disco trooper, and they're entered into the two-handed division. And likewise, Jan Ling, with her JPK 1030 Min River, is also racing in the two-handed division with Aymeric Belvoir. There will, of course, be Australians on all sorts of other boats, and there'll also be yachts that we'll recognise for yachts that have entered the Hobart over the years, most notably Max Klink's Caro, Chris Sheehan's Warrior One, and Tom Canine's Sunrise 3, which of course won the Fastnet race in 2021. We won't just be talking to the crew either. We're going to be taking a look at the unique hazards and challenges of this race, not least getting out of the Solent in good shape, rounding three very serious tidal gates on the headlands going down the English coast, and also coping with five traffic separation lanes. We're also hoping to be talking weather strategy with Will Oxley, who will be the navigator on Warrior One. We're excited to be covering this race for the first time and for me it's something of a trip down memory lane. I participated in several Cows Weeks during the middle of the 1970s and I also took part in the 1977 Fastnet race which was one of the slowest on record. So we're looking forward to bringing you all the action and stories from Cows and we'll see you then.